Welcome back to the Tim and Jerry show with Tim yeah. and Jerry. Jerry, welcome to the show. Welcome back to uh, Meeting of Catholic. How you doing, brother? We were just discussing. I'm doing good. Project. It, it's yes. going to be out very soon. Everybody just patiently wait. Okay. Yes. It's going to yeah. be awesome. It's going to be awesome. In fact, I thank all of you. (laughs) I I thank all of you in uh, the acknowledgments of the book (laughs) for for patiently waiting, right? And some of you impatiently waiting. Um, And so I I, I thank all of you, but it's worth it. Believe me, we were talking behind the scenes about the stuff going on and how it's out of my hands at this point. And so uh, it's pretty much, you know, except for the cover, things that, that are dealing with the book are either between either my sister or on its way just through me to Tim. <laughs> and then, then bada boom, bada bing, you got a book. And it's going to be fantastic. And so we were talking about it beforehand, some of the secret behind the scenes stuff. Behind the scenes of the behind the scenes stuff. Because this episode is version. behind the director's, scenes. Director's cut version. <laughs> director's yeah. cut, man. So, yeah, director. Uh, <laughs> Executive yeah. director. Yeah. Uh, so th- this show is called the SSPX Debate, which yeah. is where we're, gonna, we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, recent controversies that have arisen and uh, in the meaning of Catholic community in the guild chat. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, debate, disputing, and this show in particular is going to designed to promote charitable dialogue. And I just want to speak to that for a minute. Um, as usual to promote the postulate, we'll release the first 15 minutes or so of this show publicly. If you want the full thing, you have to become a guild member the guild helps support the whole apostolate, the mission of the apostolate. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash meaning of Catholic or meaning of Catholic.com slash donate. Um, and I just want to speak to that really quick because meaning of Catholic, I, I try to say this as often as possible, but the, uh, the opinions that I express or that paleocrat express or that other hosts express on meaning of Catholic or people who are associated with meaning of Catholic or all of our contributors, collaborators, all people who are part of this effort, this apostolate, do not necessarily with agree, agree with each other. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that's the point. The point is to get together with the meaning of Catholic. So meaning of Catholic is not a trad apostolate. We're not trad. We're not conservative. We're not this or that. The other thing, I am not of Paul or Apollos. I am of Christ. What we mean by that is we have a confession of faith at meaningofcatholic.com which you can read that the confession of faith is where we all agree. We all confess the same Catholic faith. And the fact is that uh, as I wrote in the, so the initial documents of this three years ago, um, an important motto that helps our mission of uniting Catholics, Catholics against the enemies of Holy church is in essential things, unity in doubtful things, liberty, and in all things, charity. And, so we to right in, in this show we're gonna debate or discuss or dispute or whatever about something that is more doubtful. It's more doubtful than the essential matters of the faith, and um, so I just want to emphasize that that uh, that's what this apostolate is about. It's about bringing Catholics together, Catholics who are in communion with an, one another at the same altar, and who share the same Catholic faith, but who come from different perspectives, different schools of thought, different opinions on controversial matters. So I am on the trad spectrum, if you will. Uh, I'm on the recognize and resist spectrum. Um, Bannister is on the critic of the r r spectrum of some kind. I don't know what you describe yourself, Palocrat, but... Um, we disagree. Me other people, people, other people describe me for me, <laughs> right? And so I get, I get like all different descriptions all over the place. And uh, yeah, if you want to labor no. your stuff or not, you can just say yeah, Catholic no. or not. I don't, it yeah. But uh, the point is, Bannister and I disagree on certain controversial matters, and yes, yeah. we're getting together in this show to try to promote this type of dialogue as a part of the mission of being a Catholic. So, yeah. any comments on that before we get into the topic? Bannister. uh no well I, I i would like to say this you know just as as something from the beginning because it kind of lays out you know a little bit of where i stand on this too you know uh tim said something just a moment ago about you know the the um fraternal dynamic of of meaning of catholic you know that we have the same faith and but then he said something later and i wrote it down you know we all have the same faith in my head i'm thinking but it's a little more than that right it's not just that we have the same faith there's other things at play with the church but then he said and they have the same altar 
And I just want people to just ask themselves throughout this, do we have the same altar? And mm -hmm. this is a serious question um, because, and even, even if we said we do, um, are we, are we cutting off communion with others? In other words, would you be willing if you do not go to the SSPX, would you be willing to go to the SSPX? Would you in principle think that you are doing something in violation of your principles? If you go and you hear mass at the SSPX and what would those principles be? And on the flip side of that, would you go to a Novus Ordo? And what would the principles be for that? Why would you not commune? Because the vast majority of Catholics around the world are Novus Ordo. So I'm only saying that as a preface to simply point out that it's not just about the faith. It's also about an altar. And people can debate that. We Maybe maybe we will here. But um, I don't want to debate so much, though. <laughs> I don't. I, I try to avoid some of this. Some of the crazy went down while I was gone, Tim. <laughs> I come back. And some of it's the same. It's just hotter. You know, it's like. Yeah, yeah. Corey yeah. says, uh, you went into hibernation, Palocrat, for a couple of months, and everyone became enthusiasts. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. And it was weird, too, because I, I leave for, what, almost three months. Longest I've ever had to leave for something. I'll leave for three months. And I come back and it's like the world's on fire. The world's totally on fire. All these crazy things happen. I'm like, man, I was hoping it might be a little lonely without me, but you guys did fine. <laughs> I'm like, I come back to this is a heyday for me. I said, oh, man. <laughs> and Anthony says, uh, the fact that we aren't of one mind on all things, but stand as brothers despite that is a testament to us all being brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I, 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 I'm really glad you emphasized that, Bannister, because it is of the of the same altar if you just extract the controversial aspects of the liturgy the novus ordo and all these different controversies and you, you just ex sort of extract that and put that into the platonic form of the same altar and you read i, I was just reading first corinthians recently because we're doing the bible reading when he discusses i am of apollo i'm of apollos mm -hmm. um because when we think about that and we just Set aside for a minute all the controversies we should have as Christians, if we are in communion with one another at the same altar, because we're communing with the Catholic Church in communion with the Holy See, Pope Francis, at, the, at a valid Eucharist, which is in communion with him and all that. We are thus members of one another. This is a spiritual reality that we all suffer together. We all commune together. Um, and there, nothing should harm that um, if if we uh, if we uh, sort of abstract some of the controversies for a minute, we should have this this fraternal charity and this desire to commune with one another as brethren in the same Catholic faith. Um, I what I wanted to do, Bannister, was bring up the Catholic doctrine of conscience, because I feel like this really helps a little bit to cut through so first the doctrine of communion that you just mentioned that's like first and foremost but then when we talk about essential things and doubtful things and all things charity i think i feel like the the doctrine of conscience is very helpful for that it's helpful for us to forgive one another when we have strong feelings um so i just want to go over this a little bit so this will be the end of our public portion is we'll we'll go over this conscience part and then we're going to talk more in in particular about the SSPS controversy and all of y'all's questions. So I just want to go over this really quickly. Uh, so this, just, just so everybody knows, this is from the Handbook of Moral Theology, uh, Dominic Prumer. And this is the same doctrine that you will find in the New Catechism as well, except it's just going to have a bunch of these Thomistic terms that are making these different distinctions, which I think are helpful. Um, but it's the same doctrine. It, there's nothing really has changed. The problem with the doctrine of conscience is that a bunch of liberal heretics used the doctrine of conscience to promote a rejection of humanity vitae, which is that's a false, like you cannot use the doctrine of conscience to justify heresy, obviously, uh, you know, justify breaking the Ten Commandments. It can't be done. But the heretics try to do that. And on the other hand, there is the opposite extreme where you like the, the idea that conscience even exists is totally denied. You know, there's just this objective standard and you can't have any subjective culpability or any gradation of that or anything like that. So here is this the Catholic doctrine of conscience. And I just want to bring up here 
and then we'll continue on the guild stream and all of y'all's questions. So here is um, really quickly. Let me see if I, what do I need to do to get this thing? Up? There we go. Okay. So if you're following along at home in your Prumer text, this is number 135 definition. The conscience is the judgment or dictate of the practical intellect deciding from general principles, the goodness or evil of some act, which is to be done here and now, or has been done in the past. And then he breaks this definition down with all these different distinctions. But the point is, it's essentially is that the conscience is taking these general principles and then it's applying them to this particular situation. And this is where we should all agree on general principles. Catholics should all agree on the general principles, uh, you know, the divine constitution of the church that, that uh, you know, Bannister brings up a lot from Leo the 13th. That we should all agree on these general principles. We should all agree on the faith, all these different things. But then there are, when we apply that to the practical situation, this is where we often come to into a disagreement because we're considering these different factors and we're weighing the different importances of different factors. How important is this? How important is that? We're going to disagree on how important different things are in this different situation. Also, a very a very easy thing for everybody to understand is that we all have very different situations. We have di we're in different dioceses, we're in different parishes. You may be experiencing a different a totally different situation than somebody in a totally different diocese. Likely, you are, and this will actually have a huge effect on where you stand on SSPX because. If you're, for example, if you're in a diocese where it's just kind of a barren wasteland of Catholicism, every every Novus Ordo parish you have is, you know, committing sacrilege and all sorts of and people are preaching heresies. The bishop is uh, out to lunch and all this craziness is happening. Or, you know, you're in the COVID madness at the time. You know, everything's shut down and you need to baptize your child. There's no priest that'll do it. Uh, you know, various situations that can arise that that will totally change your conscience decision because of the circumstances. Um, so it's very important that we take this into consideration uh, that each of us are coming to different conclusions based on our conscience. So there's a few other distinctions we wanna make here. Um, tr a true conscience and a false conscience. Uh, let me, actually, let me go back really quickly and, and just go over a few of these back here. Um, so he talks about these different aspects of the conscience. So for one, we, we need to exclude the lax conscience. The lax conscience judges on insufficient grounds that there's no sin in the act and that the sin is not so grave as it is in fact. And the worst form of this conscience is a hardened conscience. So we need to exclude this completely because each of us needs to be acting in good faith, striving to be a faithful Catholic, each of us has an obligation to form our conscience to make it a true conscience. Let's see. Um, let's get, oh, what's the next? Next page here. Your conscience must be true. Let me, let me just um, read these principles here. Everyone is obliged to use serious care to possess on all occasions a true conscience. Everyone has to form their conscience according to the truth, according to the, the general principles have to be true. This is why the liberal heretics cannot reject him on Evite, because they have to form their conscience. They're obliged, they're obliged to form their conscience according to the truth, according to the true Catholic faith. They can't invoke conscience against him on Evite. It's, it's part of the objective Catholic faith. Second principle, everyone is obliged to follow his conscience, whether it commands or forbids some action, not only when is it true, but also when it is in invincible error. And this is where we get into the distinction between vincible error, vincible error, and invincible error. So vincible error means that you are not taking seriously your obligation to form your conscience. You are vincible. You are culpable. You should have known better. You can't just say, oh, my conscience told me so because you neglected to form your conscience. You must form your conscience according to this important, according to the objective moral standards. But invincible error refers to when you are doing your best in good faith to form your conscience, but you happen to be in error. Now, Prumer makes um, 
he gives some examples. For example, a person who is convinced that he ought to tell a lie in order to save his friend from da some danger is bound to tell the lie. In so doing, he does not commit a formal sin. Anyone who thinks that today is a fast day, although as a matter of fact, it is not, and in spite of his conviction does not observe the fast, commits formal sin. So you have to act according to your conscience, even if you are in invincible error. So this is important. Uh, now, we're just going to close out. What's, this real, oh, real, qu real quickly, just, just for my sake. Um, above, when, when you had the thing about lax judgment, it was, a, it was a bunch of those. Are you able to go back up to that? I, I, just, sure. want a screen, I just want a screenshot. Oh, yeah. This saw, is, he yeah. goes through a lot of different definitions of different forms of consciences, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I saw there was a Pharisaic conscience right here. Yeah. Uh, as well. So, yeah, it was lax, scrupulous, perplexed, hardened, Pharisaic. All right. So, let's see here. I'm just going to get a quick screenshot, bro. There we and go. There we, and there we go. All right. Yeah. And, and just so everybody knows, everybody can pick up a copy of, of uh, the reprint of Primer that Sophia Press has put out under Benedictus Books. This is a, a fantastic manual of moral theology. It's very, very helpful this is why we're going through this because it's very all these distinctions are extremely helpful to just get get to these brass tacks basically so it's it's fantastic they put it there i think it's like 25 dollars, so it's it's way better than the trying to find it used for a hundred dollars online as it used to be for years um so one final principles here third principle it is not permissible to follow conscience when it is in vincible error no matter whether it commands or forbids same action on the other hand one cannot act contrary to such a conscience the error must be corrected before any action is is taken so you need to examine yourself uh like on the on the question of ssbi have you have you sufficiently studied this thing or do you just have an attitude this is we've talked about this before there is a there is a problem among trads which i readily concede which uh paleo has 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 brought out as um jansenism uh, monsignor ronald knox brings it out and um so i i would call this sort of this neo jansenist attitude among trads where you kind of start with this presupposition banister i'm giving you all the credit yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you start with a presupposition that like all the nova Ordo bishops are modernists you know everything's modernist and then so you're presupposing this so therefore we can just reject everything sort of uh, I priori, if you will. So there's this, but you're in, in that case, you would be in vincible error, vincible error, because you're not sufficiently studying the question. You're not sufficiently forming your conscience. You're just sort of presupposing something. And that would be kind of like the Pharisaic conscience, I think, because it's, it's, it's minimizing a grave sin called schism. It's minimizing that and just saying, well, I can just judge for myself. I have this attitude and that's, a, that's a real problem. So let's see, it's 18 minutes. We're going to close out the public portion from this point out. Aww, this what a, what a bummer. <laughs> what a bummer. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm saying it's just, but it's still a bummer to say goodbye to everybody. In fact, it's such a bummer. I hope that the people who aren't members say, man, I really love this conversation. And these guys are great. I should become a member of Meaning of Catholic. <laughs> and you should do it right away. <laughs> Go right now. <laughs> become a well, member. That, and you can you hear the unsolicited the plug. Yeah, man. Uh, and yeah. and uh, yeah. So Our Lady Victory Press is printing out Paleo Kratz's book very soon. Yeah. And uh, so comments on that, Bannister, what are your thoughts? Are we still, are we still public or are we private now? Do you want to make a public comment before we go private? What do you? you, up to uh, you? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say this last thing on last thing on this. Okay, go ahead. No, kind of leaping ahead for the people a little bit. Um, is that uh, I'll just simply say this is that um, I think you're right on a lot of things about you know our need to form our conscience, um, our need to uh, study, right? So so forming it, studying things like that. But I think it's I think it's there's more. I think there's certain actions that can be taken. That unless certain actions are taken, um, certain protocol has been met, that even then you'd still be vin you'd still be within the realm of vincible at that point. Even if you yeah. were to do a bunch of studying inside your house, <laughs> right? Yeah, you've done a bunch of studying, but there's it's more than that, it's more complex. And when you said one thing, you said there's a valid Eucharist in communion with the pontiff. And I know I know what you meant, but you said, and all of that. I just want to say for people who don't. Uh, are, are not members uh, over at, at Meaning of Catholic. You should be because we're going to be talking about 
and all of that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because there, because there's stuff inside there that is where the debate uh, gets particularly hot. And so I really do encourage you to go to Patreon and to and to become a member. It's, it's a lot of fun. Plus, you get you get a pass to go to the, the Telegram chat. And so you'll be able to connect with us there yeah. more directly and all that. It's the last thing I'll say, though. Last thing. And all that. Yeah. There we and go. all that. Yeah. And, and all, all that. that. Remember the show, all that? You I do remember the show, all like, that. Like, <laughs> but you were like 35 yeah. when that came out. I was like, oh, oh why? Like, I, I, was just, I was just looking up. It's true, man. That, you, that's your generation's roundhouse. Because our my generation had a show called Roundhouse. If people don't uh, know, Bannister yeah. is like 10 years older than I am. 